So this book is called The Invisible Load, A Guide to Overcoming Stress and Overwhelm. What is this invisible load? Why can't we see it? <laughs> So it's talking about the stress that we carry that no one else can see and sometimes we can't even see it ourselves. And a lot of people think the stress in their life, and please know when I talk about stress, I'm not talking about trauma, but so often the stress that we think that we carry, it's because of the people or the tasks or the situations in our life when usually it's the way that we think about those things often in relation to ourselves. So it's like we've got a backpack on our back and it's full of rocks and bricks and we don't even realise we're carrying that around. And so this is everyday stress. This is, I've got to pick up the dry clean. You know, I've got to get the kids to school and then they've got to go to soccer practice and I've got to cook dinner and then such and such has lost their shoes. This is the sort of thing we're talking about, right? Ex exactly. And in the book, I've actually written a whole section called Are You the Rememberer? Because what we find in our relationships, our work relationships, our personal relationships, there's usually one person who's the rememberer of all of the things. And you, it's almost like you can't... It's difficult to delegate it because you often don't know what you're, what you're actually pulling off. So it, it talks about that. So this everyday mm -hmm. stress and overwhelm often, not always, but most often, lands on women, especially in a family, because they're the rememberers. Yes. Are women actually doing a disservice by remembering everything for everybody? I think it's really good to share the load. <laughs> I think it's really good to acknowledge the load and then ask for help. And it's important to encourage people to be able to do that. And one of the reasons we have to do that is because of the impact it's having on our health. I think a lot of people don't really realise that stress is the basis of their bloated tummy or the challenges with their sex hormones or a debilitating menopause or the recurring headaches, of course, as long as sinister things have been mm. ruled out. And once we deal with the stress and what it really is, and that's really what I'm trying to do with this book, is have a deeper conversation about stress rather than us living with the mantra, oh, I'm so stressed. We've got to take it deeper and see what it actually is for us as individuals. So you're not taking away the activities no. or the responsibilities? No. Just the thinking? The thinking about it, the way that we see that particularly in the way that we relate to ourselves. We all have, the way I see it is, we've got forward words and they're traits that we've incorporated into our identity about how we want to be seen. And most of us want to be seen as kind, thoughtful, selfless, efficient, reliable, intelligent, maybe plan fun, playful, those sorts of things. And if you actually sit in that moment where you feel really stressed, a good question to ask is, am I perceiving there is a risk I am being seen in a way that is the opposite of my forward word? So it's a great way to begin to stress-proof your thinking. Is there something that uh, our viewers can actually do right now in order to sort of get their get started on de-stressing their lives? Yeah, so that forward exercise word is really good. So think, how do I want to be seen? Mm -hmm. And the, an important thing to realise is most of us want to be seen in a positive light by others, but it's when that is so essential, you feel like it's almost essential to your survival, so you have no flexibility with, your, with the way you will allow others to see you. That's incredibly important. And obviously, a, a th this sounds too simple to make a difference, but the thing that lowers stress hormones faster and more effectively than anything is the way that we actually breathe and if you become breath aware instead of breathing in a short sharp shallow way in the upper part of your chest lower down into your tummy breathe diaphragmatically it communicates to your body that you're safe that's a really simple trick are we all trying to keep up appearances and we just cannot well, I think a huge part of stress in, this, in the context we're talking about, it actually comes from worrying about what other people think of us. So again, in the book, one of the things I talk about is let's get really clear on how do you want to live and what are your values? Because once you identify that, it makes it so much easier to say no to things that you don't really want to be part of. And it helps you live, I think, a much more authentic life. And with that comes a lot less stress. There are things out there that we all use to try and deal with stress. We'll have mm. our coffee because we're a bit tired and we need to get to this meeting, etc. Are, are these the right things to be doing? Should we be having coffee? Uh, I'm certainly not the anti-coffee human, but I do think that people regularly overconsume it and caffeine leads the human body to produce adrenaline, one of our stress hormones, which historically we only produced when our life was literally in danger. So a lot of people communicate biochemically to their body that they're in danger every day because of some of those choices. So it can be a good thing to review. Wow. And, and what else? So do you replace it with tea or do you just <laughs> stop drinking it? Or <laughs> Well, you can cut it back. I think a lot of people probably do benefit from taking a complete break from it. Uh, tea behaves in a different way in the human body biochemically. It's still got some caffeine, but it's buffered by another substance called theanine. But we, we do need to make water our main drink as boring as that message is. <laughs> well, it's not boring. It's delicious. And uh, <laughs> honestly, you're going to have to read this because it's so important. The Invisible Load, a guide to overcoming stress and overwhelm. And we've, we all do it. So get this book.
Thank you so much. It's Dr. a pleasure. Thank you so much, Hayley.